What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sasquatch Performance Garage. Today we have a 1991 Mercury Capri with the four cylinder 1.6 five speed manual transmission. And this thing, it's my new lemons car. Uh, I got a buddy with me that's gonna be on my team. We're gonna look for a few more people, but I just bought this a couple days ago and I was only able to drive it 10 minutes until I had an issue. So, uh, bought it for right about $800. And I mean, it, I, what can I say? This thing is a turd, but I already love her. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. And uh, so issues that we have right now, we have a alternator that is not charging, uh, which isn't the biggest deal in the world. I got a brand new battery that is gonna get me home, uh, but we do have a coolant leak that is a big issue. So what we're gonna do is we're trying to gonna fix this coolant leak and see what we can, uh, if we can get it home for the hour drive. So I'll bring you guys along for the ride. All right, everybody. So I uh, got underneath the car here, got jacked up, put it on jack stands. I've been, I found the coolant leak and I believe I also found the reason why the alternator is not charging. So let me show you those two issues here real quick. Right here on the connector for the alternator, we have some looks what looks like either chewed up wires or at least smashed wires for sure. I uh, believe I'm gonna try to fix that. I think the place that I'm at might have a new pigtail for it. If not, I'll be able to do a quick repair on that with some butt connectors just to get me home. Then up here, if we look right there, that one hose has a bunch of coolant underneath it. And I believe that is also where I saw a bunch of coolant peeing out after my 10 minute drive. So it looks like two clamps and probably like a 5 16 to 3 8 hose and I'll be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this stuff off and see if I can uh, get this repaired. All right, so I think we got everything that we needed. We got ourselves a foot of 5 16 hose, two new clamps to make sure we got a good seal on there. Then this is our plug for the alternator. Hopefully you guys can see that it's pretty mangled up. So I cut it up to the where it's clean. And luckily we had a, another uh, connector at the O'Reilly's here that I'm at. And so I'm gonna go ahead, strip it down, put the connector on it. And let's see if that alternator starts charging from there. Uh, once I get the hose and the alternator put uh, back connected, I'm gonna go fill it with coolant, start it up, see if we make any other issues. And uh, luckily, there's another O'Reilly's halfway home, so if we have any issues, we'll stop there. All right, everybody. So we got the coolant hose back on, new clamps. We crimped in the new alternator harness. So we're gonna go ahead, start it up, see if the alternator is charging, and if we can see any coolant leaks. So let's uh, go around the side here. All right, we got electricity. Alternator's still not charging, so that's an issue. But uh, she, she does run pretty easily, you know, no big deal. So we're gonna try to get it home, and then I will give you guys a full overview of the car once we get it home. So, see you guys in a bit. Next day, didn't have enough light to do any recording once I got back to the house yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little overview right now. So, here we are. Again, we got a 1991 Mercury Capri. Pretty clean car, honestly. Uh, not too bad, obviously, convertible. Drove it with the top down yesterday on the way home. So, pretty fun little thing. Steering is pretty loose, need to fix that. The brakes on this, kind of more of a suggestion than, you know, actually stopping. You hit the brake pedal and it is slow to stop. Uh, a little bit dangerous, got it here just fine. Uh, when you do hit the brake pedal all the way to the floor, it does slow down, but it slows down very, very slowly. So let's take a look at the interior here. 
Obviously we got some panels missing on the door here. Uh, interior does leave a little bit to be desired right now. Uh, a lot of the seats uh, ripped up obviously. Gauges are kind of cool. They're a white face performance oriented gauge right now. So whoop de doo. Uh, looking at 192,000 miles on it. I don't believe that the fuel gauge works too well. Uh, again, it still doesn't charge. But it did stay below 205 degrees all the way back home. So a full hour drive didn't have any issues whatsoever um, as far as mechanically is concerned. Another thing that we'll need to work on is the clutch. Uh, it pretty much engages at the very end of its travel. So there's no like play with it at all. There's not really being able to slip anything. It's pretty much an on or off just because of how it's adjusted, I'm assuming. Another thing is the shifter. It's like you're shifting in a different zip codes, honestly. It is all the way boom, 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 boom. It is a lot of travel. It's honestly feels like it's more travel than my freaking 96 Ranger whose shifter is like this long. I mean, so need to work on some bushings there. Maybe even like a short shifter um, might be okay. Don't know uh, if we can find a, a way to make that a short shifter. But, you know, other than that, it's a pretty solid car. Let's kind of take you a little bit over the rest of this thing here. So we're going to go ahead, stick my finger in here and push to the right and it's undone. With the top down, you still have usable trunk space, but we're not going to use any of that. I guess we got a little bit of some issue right here, but again, I'm not even going to worry about that because we are getting rid of this top completely uh, for the racing. So let's let's pop the hood. Maybe give you a little bit of overview with it. And here we have this beautiful 1.6 liter motor. It shares the same architecture as the 1.6 in the first gen Miata. A lot of parts will be swapped over from the first gen Miata as well. I do know that a lot of Miata guys will use and like these valve covers. Apparently they're a little bit cooler valve covers than what the Miata has. Couldn't really tell you either way. Some of this is a little bit hodgepodge together. Uh, from what I can tell, looks like fuel f filter is not inside the bracket there. And again, it's the wrong fuel filter. The guy apparently couldn't find the right one. Um, <laughs> As you can tell, it's meant for something with quick connect and they used a clamp on it. So, you know, that's fun. For the size of the radiator and the fan, um, we're actually really happy that it did not overheat at all. Now, I didn't go crazy with it, obviously, um, you know, getting it home. No license plates. I didn't want to get pulled over. Um, but it did pretty well. So we're hoping that it continues on pretty well. But we might, even, we might do a little bit of upgrade. This radiator, from what I noticed, doesn't go the full length of the bracket here, so we might be able to find one that fits uh, the full length, uh, maybe a little bit thicker as well that we can actually make and make our own brackets with, which would be awesome, especially for the endurance racing going balls to the wall for hours at a time. Really not much more to it other than some harder to find parts on this thing that I know of. Uh, this should be a very easy, hopefully easy, setup to do on to make a lemons car out of it uh, we are going to be looking into some upgrades for it mainly in the suspension and braking portion of this the engine we're going to pretty much we're going to keep it stock uh, we're not going to do anything with it when you're not making crazy power and you have stock running equipment on the engine you're more likely to be able to make it as far as an endurance race obviously that's what the engineers that made this vehicle um, planned on it was for it to be stock the whole time so that it can withstand some punishment so we're gonna take a little drive and bring you along for that drive next video when my buddy ryan comes over where we're gonna actually go over the driving characteristics and he's actually gonna be the one that's gonna be with me to do this lemons car we got to find a few more people as well my ideal team is to have four people on the team we're gonna end it off here i really want to thank you guys for watching sasquatch performance garage and you know this is going to be a one hell of a project it is going to be so much fun to do it and you know when we get it built it's not just going to be lemons car we're going to take it on some small track days we're going to take it autocrossing we're going to do a lot with this car that is the whole point of this is that to have fun with it and not just a few weekends out of the year for the lemons race i want to be able to take this out i want any of the team to be able to take this out and and have some fun with it as long as we're you know doing right by it so i'll see you guys later